Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I declare that there is no other deity worthy of worship other than Allah and that the Prophet Muhammad is the final messenger of Allah. La ilaha illallah Muhammadur Rasulullah. Today I would like to talk to you about how you can get involved in your local masjid. Your local mosque, your community mosque, many people wonder why there are not the numbers of people that are supposed to be in the mosque that should be in the mosque. In Ramadan, why are there so many people that seem to attend and the rows seem to be full? And uh, I remember a friend of mine saying to me in the first day of Ramadan, the first week of Ramadan, you have the first 10 rows full. In the second week of Ramadan, you have two, uh, four rows full. It's the third week in Ramadan, you have four rows full. And in the last week of Ramadan, you have seven rows full. But why don't we ever get to that 10 again? Why don't we permanently the whole way through the year don't see a dribble going down, down, down? Why do we not have the mosque full the whole time? And so if you are a true believer and if you are a revert or somebody who's come to Islam, one of the most beautiful places for you to be is at the local mosque. And you need to go to the mosque as often as possible and not just during the five times daily prayer, but it's a place of refuge, a place that you go to just sit, be quiet. You can also go there to learn. One of the beautiful things about going to your local mosque is that you can sit there and read books and there's no noise, there's no crowd around you and there seems to be this beauty, this absolute peace inside it. Now for no way do we as Muslims believe that somehow the mosque is like a Catholic shrine or anything like that. It's just a building. In fact, the whole world is an opportunity or a place for us to go and pray and do our salah in. But there's something nice about going to a building that's dedicated purely for the prayers of people who believe in one God. That we don't uh, have images, we don't have statues, we don't have pictures to distract us. The only thing that you'll see in a mosque is a very simple flooring with some carpets. Maybe you'll see a couple of hieroglyphics in, inside the building, maybe the 99 names of Allah, beautifully written. Maybe you'll see the Shahada written, but that's about all you'll really see. Most of the mosques, we try to keep them as very simple. And uh, that's how it should be. So how can you contribute to your local mosque? The first way you can contribute to your local mosque is by, first of all, visiting the mosque. So first of all, visit your masjid for salah, for your prayer time. Now some people, because they live at home or they stay at home or maybe they're too frail, or maybe you live far away from a mosque and this is not possible. But if you can hear the people being called to prayer, and you hear the, the people going and make their salah, then you should go join them. Obviously, if you're too far away and you can't, then you can do it at home or you can do it in the garden, you can do it anywhere you are. But it, there's a virtue of going and, and joining together with other people. And so this is sooner that the people should go in the morning and, and in the evening, in the night prayer, to come together and be a body of people that are, are praying together. And also it edifies you, it, it lifts you up, it, it strengthens your faith. One of the things that I especially like is to engage with other people the whole time. See how they're doing, see how they're feeling. And you can't really do this if you're doing your salah at home all the time. So start with the beginning, maybe start with the first step, like just praying once a day at, at mosque, and then build it up to twice a day. And then as you can, try to do it three times a day, and the more often the better. Um, the other way that you can get involved in your mosque is to be a smiling person in the mosque. Have you been to the local mosque and seen how some people, they, they think that if they smile, they will be breaking all the laws of Islam. The bigger the frown and the longer, the more drawn down your mouth is, the better Muslim you are. And this is not true. We need Muslims that when you walk into the mosque, they shake your hand and say, welcome brother, glad to see you here. Come, let's come stand next to me. And you know, in our tradition in South Africa, we hold hands, we grab a person's hand, we don't let it go for like four or five minutes. We, we're very clingy with people and we make them feel that they're welcome. Obviously, if they're foreigners and they're new to our country, you don't do that because they know they might think we're crazy or something strange going on here. But we need people in a mosque who are concerned and they're concerned about the visitors and they make sure that each visitor that comes there is welcomed and looked after. Imagine how exciting the mosque would be if people did this more often when you went to visit. Even a child, when a child goes with you to a mosque, and he sees the adults frowning and sad. This is what he thinks Islam is. But if he goes there and he sees one of the older members of the mosque smiling and happy and, and patting the, guy, the, the child in the head instead of hitting him every time he makes a noise, it would be so much better. So we need to make sure that we are smiling people at the mosque. So the second thing to do is not only attend, but smile and be happy while you're in the mosque. The third thing is that you can be a student in the mosque. And this is a way to get your local mosque as a, as a hub of activity. So the next, the next time you have an enrollment in the mosque or they're going to be dealing with a new subject, perhaps they're going to start looking at the hadith, 40 hadith, maybe they're going to do something about tawhid, maybe they're going to do something about the life of the prophets, peace and blessing be upon them all, and they want to talk about them. 
get knowledge, learn from one another into the mosque and, and learn Islamic knowledge from the mosque. You know, sometimes we want to go and do these courses and we pay hundreds of dollars or thousands of rands or, or dinara or whatever we're paying and what currency we're from. We go pay to do these courses and where there's a course offered at our local mosque for free. So if you're fortunate to have something like that going on in your mosque, go and become a person who attends these courses and, and learns as much as possible. Many times after the uh, salah is over, like 10, 15 minutes later, they have someone who will come in there and teach. The other way you can get involved in your mosque, number four, point number four, is to become a teacher in the mosque. Perhaps at your mosque there is no activities. There's nothing going on there. There's no one teaching. There's no one giving lessons. There's no courses you can attend. Attend a training course. Go to maybe one of the Al-Qutha courses or attend one of the correspondence courses. You can find many online. Bilal Phillips, if you put in his name, you'll find that he has many courses available. They're all free. Do one of these courses. As you do the online courses, you fill in, you do the exam, you send it through. Somebody will mark the exam and send it back to you. Once you become a master of this and you've understood it, don't keep that knowledge for yourself. Go and start something up in your local mosque. Start a little group that we all sit in a circle and you teach and you, and you can become a teacher. Remember, you don't have to have your PhD. You don't have to have a master's degree. It would be better if you have a knowledge of what you're about to teach. But if you don't teach what you know, don't teach what you don't know. Speak about the subjects you do know. You'll see that many times when I do talks and lectures, I don't talk about things that I have no knowledge of. I just speak about the things that I do have knowledge of, the subject matter that I understand well. And you should do the same. If you are going to uh, be doing a course or you're going to be um, active in your local mosque, be active in a way that you can teach people things that you really, really know. The other thing that you can do in your local mosque is point five, and that is to be a follower. Now, a follower doesn't follow blindly. A follower is a person who joins in the congregation, who joins in the, the communal prayer, the salah that is done together. It helps with the spiritual identity of the community. Only if that spiritual identity or that community or that, that salah has been done by people that are following the Sunnah and the Quran. If they are following other inventions and putting other spices and flavoring in, then you don't follow them. You go to a mosque where you find they are following the teachings authentically. I'm not adding extra things. Sometimes people want to do all sorts of things. We want to start copying the Christian community or the Buddhist community or the Hindu community. Or, and we want to add those flavors into Islam. Islam's perfect. It doesn't need any changes. There's nothing you can do to improve what is already perfect. You can't make Islam any better than it already is. It's already as good as it's going to get. It's the best it can possibly be. There's no improvement needed, no outside work needed, no facelifting needed. And so, as a follower, you need to follow somebody who is good in your community, in that mosque. So the ideal person to follow would be the leader, the imam, and make sure that he's there to correct you and guide you. Maybe you're making mistakes. Maybe there's something that you're not doing right. So if you follow and you have somebody who guides you and teaches you, he'll show you the right way of thinking. He'll give you positive input. He will show you what is good for you and, and help you to think in the right way. And if you haven't got a really good role model in your community to follow, then what you need to do is you need to make that known. You need to let it be known in your community that this mosque, this masjid where I attend, we haven't got really good uh, teachers. Then we'll bring members from other mosques into your area and into your community. There are many Muslim organizations. Many of them are getting really good um, sponsorship from the general community. Remember that these uh, Muslim organizations, all of them, most of them, if not all of them, are financed by you. Every donation that you send them, every time you help them out financially, you are actually employing these people. So you have the right to call these people to come and do work in your mosques. So if there's a propagation center in your area or a Dao organization in your area, if there's uh, any groups that are in your area and you want them to get involved in your local mosque, contact these people. You're actually employing them so they have an obligation to come and look after your mosque. So you can follow these people. Make sure you get good role models. Today we have uh, children who look in their bedrooms and you see what posters and pictures and CDs and DVDs and movies they're watching, those are their role models. What is your role model? Who are you following? Are you following one of the great leaders of Islam? Are you looking at some of the great scholars of today, some of the great teachers of today? We as um, lecturers and teachers and, and da'is, we have role models we follow. We follow the Sunnah and we follow the Quran, but we have humans that help us to live, you know, how to apply that. And we look at the example of these people and we say, wow, if I could be a little bit more like that. Some of my, my heroes, and I don't mind telling you who they are, uh, is like Bilal Phillips and many others like that. They're brilliant. They're such good role models and they're, they're solid people. Who are your role models? Find somebody to follow.
We're going to take a short break, and when we get back, we'll continue looking at the 12 ideas that you can follow to make your mosque better. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome back. We are looking at 12 ways to get active or involved in your local masjid. And we said that there are 12 ways, and the 12 ways we are going to look at, we've looked at six so far. The first one was be a visitor. In other words, attend mosque. Now, way, the first way to get involved is actually to attend mosque. Like I said, start once a day, then twice a day, and then build up from there. Remember, Islam is a religion of gradualism. We take it step by step. If you're a new Muslim, don't worry, take it step by step. Go once a day, then twice a day, and three times a day, and build up. Doesn't mean that uh, that's the only time you do your salah. When you're at home, you do it. Uh, it's good to do it at home. It's good to do it in private so you don't show off. But to do it in the mosque or the community is very, very good. Second is to smile, be happy. Be somebody who is an advert, who, who represents the community of, of happy Muslims, happy people. And we go there and we greet people. We get the, make the children feel happy to be there. That's the second way. Third way is to be a student. In other words, go study with somebody in the mosque. Sometimes there's classes, five, ten minutes in the mosque. Just stay a few minutes afterwards and learn something. The fourth way is if you can be a teacher yourself. Maybe you can be a teacher and offer some teaching. And then the fifth way was to be a follower. In other words, if you've got a good imam, good teacher, follow his teachings, follow him, make sure you're answerable to somebody. And I said, if you haven't got a good teacher and you want to be a good follower, get somebody from one of the local Muslim communities who you are basically employing to come there and to look after the mosque so you can follow him. And the sixth thing was to be a leader. Now, to be a good leader, you need to be a good follower. I have a great teacher. My teacher is uh, Musayid Dawood. Musayid is my, my teacher. Whoever he tells me, I follow and I argue with him. Many times he tells me things and I argue with him. And two weeks later, I found out that what he said is right. So you, to have a good teacher means you can disagree, but you should listen to him, you should have respect for him, and you should be the type of teacher that wants you to go further. So once you become a good follower, then hopefully, and inshallah, you'll become a good teacher. And so you'll become a good leader. So the next step or the sixth step is to be a good leader. To be a good leader or to be a leader of any type, that means you have to be present, you have to be involved with projects, maybe outreach programs, maybe food scheme projects. You need to be involved. And one of the things that is important if you want to be a leader is to have self-control. In other words, there must be no arrogance in you, there must be no self-centeredness in you. You mustn't think you're more important than you are. I have noticed some people, and please forgive me because uh, Allah is my witness that I'm not meaning to refer to any human being that knows me, but I've noticed with some people that when they buy themselves and you talk to them, they have this relaxed, very easy, approachable manner to them. But the minute they are with their friends of their own country or friends from their own region, that they become very pompous and proud. And sometimes you see them uh, almost as if they were, were kings or lords and they raise their hands and push their hands down like this for people to sit instead of saying, can you please sit down? Or they'll go with their hand like this to tell people to get out the way. I mean, these are things that we don't do as leaders. This is not what a leader does. A leader is compassionate. He's caring. He's loving. He's understanding of the people, and he does not act like that. It's actually terrible to imagine that somebody would even do that. And so if you know people who do that, and maybe you're one of those people who does that, think about changing that habit because it doesn't look very good for the person who's watching. So be a person who has no arrogance, that's not self-centered, and be careful of the skills that you've acquired, that you use them wisely. The next point I'd like to raise, or the seventh point, is to be a brother. Now this word brother, we need to understand this word really well. We are all brothers, no matter what race, what, what, what heart, no matter what job you have, we're all brothers. Because when we stand in the congregation together, and Surah Al-Fatiha is read, and we all say Amin together, at that point, we all become brothers. But we're brothers before that point as well. Some people believe that only when they say the Amin after Surah Al-Fatiha, then we're brothers. But before that, we're not. We are brothers all the time, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And if your brother calls you for help, you are to go help him. You don't try and push it off to somebody else. I remember at one point, I used to do this with people. I say, whenever you're sick, or you need help, or you're in time of need, day or night, 24 hours a day, don't call me. And people always used to think they, I was going to say, call me. But sometimes we have to be careful because that's how we are. We say, no, no, brother, I'll help you anytime, day or night. But when they actually put us to the test and they ask for help, we know where to be found. We give an excuse why we can't help. So a brother is there for everybody. He's there for all the other brothers, not just for one person in particular. 
So Allah accepts all of us as one person, as one brotherhood. And so we need to accept everybody as one person, as one brotherhood. And we need to look after each other. And so we need to make sure that we immense ourselves, we, we soak ourselves in this brotherhood, that we care and actually are concerned. You know, some people you go up to them and you say, how are you doing today? And they tell you and you say, oh, I don't, actually don't want to know. In your mind, you say, I don't want to know. So most of us, when we greet each other, they say, as can we say, salam. You say, how are you? They go, no, fine, alhamdulillah. And some people, when you ask them how they are, they give you the whole story. As a true brother, you should listen. You should listen to what this person has to say. So we need to have love and understanding for each other. We need to accept each other and we need to love each other for the sake of Allah. Some people are difficult. Some people are arrogant. Some people are obnoxious. Some people are overbearing. But these are the people that Allah has created. He's created every single person perfectly. And if they're brothers in Islam, they're your brother. And you have to treat them like that. Now it brings us to point eight. Point eight is to be a helper. The masjid is the best place to remember and practice the teachings of the Quran. Because sometimes when we're at home, we forget about these things. And in chapter 5 and verse 2 of the Quran, it says, Help you one another in benevolence and pity, and do not help one another in sin or hostility. In other words, encourage each other to do what is good, forbid what is wrong. Help each other to do what is right and prevent sin and hostility. Hostility is when you hold something back. You hate people and you know how we backbite and we talk about people. We mustn't do that. So what we need to do is we need to be a helper. What else can we do to help people along the way? How can we help people to, to become more righteous? How can we help people to be better? And so the masjid is the best place to, to remember and to practice the teachings of the Quran. You know, often we have halkas, a little meeting in the morning sometimes before we start work. And the halka goes on for maybe 20 minutes or 25 minutes. And the minute the halka is finished, people start scandaling and talking about each other and backbiting. And you think, wow, when you've just finished talking about the beauty of Islam and now you're busy going back to the work of shaitan. And so one of the, the eighth point, we need to be a helper. We need to make sure that we practice in the mosque. We need to help each other and guide each other, see what we can do to encourage each other. The ninth point is one that often people don't like to hear, and that is to be a cleaner. To be a cleaner, what I mean is I'm not talking in the spiritual sense of being a cleaner. I'm talking about the real sense of being a cleaner. Sometimes the mosque doesn't have the finances, the masjid doesn't have the finance, and even if they do, it takes you no time at all to help put or pack away the books, maybe put the Qurans away, pack the Qurans properly, maybe make sure that the books are dusted, because sometimes you open these cupboards in the, in the mosque or you pick, take them off the shelf, and there's just dust that flies everywhere. Help along in, in the mosque, be a cleaner, be someone who can help. You know, um, help do little things. Maybe the bathrooms need to be cleaned and the person's not available. Don't say, oh, it's not my job, I don't do that. It's your job. It's your place to look after. You must look after it. You use it. In your home, you would pull your weight and you would help clean. But yet somehow when it comes to the local mosque, you think that somebody else must do it. Just because he gets a salary to do it doesn't mean that you can't help. You must help. Your job is to go there and help in any way possible. Perhaps there's some documents or books that need to be passed around. Maybe you, uh, there's a meeting being organized. You can lay out the chairs or something in one of the halls around the, by the masjid. But get involved in the local masjid. Get involved in the mosque. And the best way to do that is to help by cleaning. And I guarantee if you go and you do a little bit of cleaning, the guy will also help somebody else or another person who's there will also want to get involved in doing the same thing. So help with cleaning. It's, a, and it's an important thing. And you'll suddenly realize how much work is actually done. Vacuuming those carpets. It's a big job. I've done it a few times myself, and so I know what it's like. Um, the windows need to be cleaned. It's nice to come into a mosque and have nice, clean windows. So get involved as much as possible. The tenth way is to be a donor. To be a donor towards the mosque is to help to contribute financially towards the upkeep of the mosque. But also to be a donor means you can also help and get involved in causes. In other words, uh, stand on the committees, become a trustee, um, things like that. Some people, they become trustees of the mosque and they just never move. They're like uh, vigilantes. <laughs> Once they sit on that board, they never get off that board. And this is not the way the mosque should be. We should have new blood coming in all the time. We should have fresh blood coming in. And uh, I wouldn't say old blood going out, but let's have, give everybody a turn. So everyone can feel part of this community. Everyone can, can feel part of, uh, of the local masjid that they go to. So don't keep the same staff over and over and over and over and over again on the trust board. Get new people in. Give other people an opportunity. Con continuously turn over. Some of you might know that in high school you have a prefect, someone who gets his badge and he can control everybody around him. In my school, what we did, we had a unique program in matric in the final year of school. Every single student had an opportunity of being a prefect. And so each person, uh, each set of prefects, they had the badge for three weeks and they gave it to somebody else. And I'll tell you what, it brought such unity and direction and, and brotherhood because of that, because everybody realized one is not greater and more important than the other. 
And I guarantee if you try that in your local mosque, you'll see the change in attendance, you'll see the change in behavior, you'll see the change in the total running of the mosque. More people want to get involved in the mosque, more people will start donating time and finances and materials. I mean, sometimes when we say donor, people immediately think, how much dollars is it going to cost me? It's not always about dollars. Dollars, yes, we need those things, but we also need your time. There's no substitute for your time. You know, sometimes we Muslims, we're very good at writing checks out. We hand a check and we think that that will clear our conscience. But we also have to be active in the, in the community. We have to get up and go do things. Not always just signing checks. Checks, good, we need them because we can't run organizations without them. However, we also need your manpower, we need your time. So think of getting involved in the mosque in, in, in that way as well. Become a donor. The 11th point is to be a listener. Now, there's nothing worse than talking on a Friday Juma and everybody's just standing vacant. You just see these big for sale signs above their head or vacant or to let signs. You see nothing. It's just blank. Blank faces looking at you. And you know that they're not listening. And when you ask them a question, you suddenly everyone wakes up because they know there's a question mark at the end of that and they only know how to wake up when there's a question mark. So as soon as there's a question, everyone wakes up and they all look around and pretend they don't see you. And they don't want to make any eye contact with the speaker, so they all look at the floor and they become very sanctimonious, so suddenly people start reciting chapters of the Quran suddenly. But they don't listen. And so when a speaker comes in, he might be boring. I'm not the best speaker in the world, and I know I'm, I'm quite, I've got this monotone, flat way of speaking. My brother says to me, every time I start talking, he wants to fall asleep. So I know I have that voice. But come on, give us a chance. We, we're trying to get in. We, we want to tell you something. We want to teach you something. So be a listener. Uh, the best way to gain knowledge is to listen. You know, often even when we're talking or debating or we're speaking to people about Islam, sometimes they switch off when you can see there's no register on. The lights are, the lift is switched off. There's nothing happening in their mind anymore. What we need to do is we need to find a way to click our brains back on. Uh, maybe start moving our toes around, maybe concentrate a little bit hard on what's being said, try to remember what the speaker is saying, but be a listener because you learn a lot from that. And if you're a good listener, you'll become a good speaker eventually, inshallah. So the, one of the, the good things is to be someone who pays attention. In school, when a teacher speaks, sometimes you would switch off, or when you were at lectures or university, we can easily just switch off. We want to pay attention, we want to listen to what, what is being said. Now that brings me to the final point, and the final point is that we need to be a good speaker. You can go to the mosque and be a speaker. Number 12 is to be a speaker. So if you want to get involved, you must be a speaker. At least attend the mosque as much as possible. Maybe you can be a speaker. Maybe on a Friday you can be a speaker. Maybe you can be a speaker for little sermonettes during the week. But learn to do it. Start slowly but surely. Don't do long sermons, just do small ones. So these are easy points that you can remember when you join your local mosque. Do these things. These 12 steps are very easy to follow. It's a 12 step program. Get involved in your local mosque. Get active. Make it fun, make the mosque an exciting place to go. And remember, 12 easy steps to making your mosque a better place to be. My name is Arib Islam, and I thank you for listening to me, and inshallah, we will meet again. Assalamu alaikum.